Hello and welcome back to Global with John Sokol. Here's what's ahead in the programme. Who let that woman in the lab on the eve of International Women's Day? We'll ask why being a scientist who possesses two X chromosomes still means a life of lower pay and fewer promotions. I'll be talking to the diversity head of the Royal Academy of Engineers as well as our science reporter who has a staggering story of her own to tell. And there's gold in them craters, well, platinum actually, but that's just as good. We get a behind-the-scenes peek at US efforts to win the moon rush. We know that there's water on the moon, which is a game-changer for the solar system. Water is rocket fuel. It also can support life and agriculture. So exploring the moon commercially is a first step towards making the moon part of our world. Now, when it comes to science, have you ever thought about it being a sexist industry? Well, a recent survey by Nature magazine has revealed that despite progress being made, female scientists are still paid less, promoted less, win fewer grants and are more likely to leave the job than similarly qualified men. So how can this gender gap be tackled and what is being done to close it? Well, I'm joining me now in the studio is Rebecca Morell, our science reporter with BBC World, and Bola Fatimilehin, Head of Diversity at the Royal Academy of Engineering. Well, thank you very much both for, for being here. Is it still the case? Is there still this discrimination? I'm not sure whether I could absolutely say it's discrimination, but I think that historically there's a lot of gender stereotyping um, around uh, the roles and the jobs that women and men do. Um, I think that when people talk about increasing women in engineering, I think one of the key issues is that actually there isn't a critical mass in the supply chain uh, to, be in, to being an engineer. So when we talk about being an engineer, how do you get to be an engineer? Um, if we look at the UK education system, um, you know, you start off in primary school, you move on to your GCSEs. At GCSE, the critical subjects um, for, for science, other sciences, for engineering, which is what I guess I'm most associated with, it is physics and maths. At GCSE, you have about 45% girls doing physics. At A-level, that number reduces significantly. So we have 20% of girls doing physics at A-level. And the Institute of Physics have researched this um, in the last year to identify that actually that problem has been around for the last 20 years. It's persistent. Rebecca, did the, did the report surprise you? It did, actually. I mean, there, there were... Just some of the numbers were so stark in there. So, mm. you know, in terms of... Um, we're doing better in terms of getting female scientists to do their doctorates, their PhDs. So in America, for example, it's about 50-50 male to female across the sciences. But the number of professors, you know, the top jobs in science, it's just a fifth. In the European Union, um, they, they looked at sort of pay of, of scientists who work in the public sector and women are earning about 25 to 40 percent less than their male counterparts. So there really is quite a marked difference. And I know we get this is across it, and lots is it, of things. Is it subject dependent? I mean, I, you know, I wonder whether kind of, I don't know, biomedical sciences, maybe there are more women, uh, mechanical engineering or civil engineering, fewer. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely true. So the sort of, you know, the biology, biomedical sciences, definitely more women attracted. And as you go for, through from, you know, chemistry somewhere in the middle, physics and engineering, the, the number of women definitely tail off. And whether that's to do with there not being enough female role models or enough uh, women teachers out there to inspire young girls to come in, I'm not sure. And Bola, I know in engineering there has been a kind of a, a disconcerted push to make engineering seem cool, you know, building yeah, great yeah. things that yeah. kind of affect our lives and all the rest yes. of it. I, is that attracting women as well? I think, I mean, it's very disappointing to say, but it looks like the number of women in engineering in the UK is actually decreasing, um, so that in um, 28... 2007-2008, we had about 8% women in engineering in the UK, which still made us bottom of the league of European states. All other European states had more women engineers in the UK. Um, I went to a meeting uh, by UKRCYs, who are a campaigning organisation for women in science, engineering and technology, and they report that the figure is now nearer to 5.5%. So it's not helping. And just going to the point about um, women in the uh, biomedical, yes, there are more women, but they don't get to be professors in the same proportions as men. So even though actually there are more 
you know, there are more women biomedical students. They don't, they're not getting to the top. I know you, you did a science degree. Yes. What happened, and you, what, you, what were you doing in chemistry? So I studied chemistry at university, which on the whole was a wonderful experience. And, you know, not probably definitely more men than women doing the mm. subjects, but we weren't in too much of a minority. Um, but no, I did, I did have, you know, a couple of outrageous experiences, one of them from a very kind of stuffy old mm. professor who said that I probably wouldn't get very far in science because I'm blonde. Um, and actually, I mean, I haven't got very far in science because I'm now a journalist mm. rather than a scientist, but I'd probably argue that it's um, not because I'm blonde, but um, that, <laughs> that, yes. that happened. Uh, were you shocked? Yeah, no, I was outraged at the time. I was furious. Mm. Oh, did you, you know, say you sexist pig or not? No, no, because was, I was quite young. I think now I probably would have given him a karate kick or something like that, but um, back at the time, I just mm. sort of thought, oh, this is a bit bit off but yeah no it's horrible but I mean that's quite rare I think that's mm. quite unusual this mm. sort of blatant sexism that occurs it's, it's more it's more of a sort of innate so problem yeah so, Bola, so what, how we, what are you gonna do about it how can you change it um, what we are what are we going to do about it I mean I think some of the the, the recommendations that have been made I mean a, a good note to I think a good, good point to raise is that actually government government is very interested the UK has an industrial strategy and there is an active uh, 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 you know, strategy to try and increase the number of engineers full stop because actually not as many men are going into engineering so there's an issue um, and I think uh, first of all BIS, the Department for Business Innovation and Skills giving money to the academy to do something about it and then the question is well what are we doing about it? Well we are working with the profession as a whole, so that's employers, um, is one strand that we're working with. We're working with the professional institutions as well, and we're also working with education to try and help All them right. come up with strategies. But I think the point about okay. um, stereotyping is, is, is a very right. important one. Thank you both very much indeed for okay. being with us. And there's more still to come on Global. Join us for a trip down Egypt's historical Nile. We'll be asking the question on the lips of most of the tourist industry there, where did all the holidaymakers go?